So welcome everybody. It is so good to have you all here. And um, we are gonna be talking about the easy way to capture and preserve memories. And um, we're gonna talk about doing it with this little guy right here, your, your phone. So I have an iPhone, but this will work for an Android as well, as long um, as you just, you know, follow the specific instructions for the Android. But we're just gonna talk about family memories and how to preserve them and to make them last. So um, I like to think, about my grandmother who just recently passed away at the age of 99. And whenever we would go to her house, it was chock full of memories. And I mean, every single picture that any of her grandchildren ever sent her, any letter, any gift, anything. There was no space on the walls for anything. And it was really kind of fun walking down memory lane. I'd go to my grandma's house and I felt like I was just kind of watching a timeline of my life because I could see pictures of me as a little girl, um, as a teenager um, getting married. And then I would see my kids represented there. So she did an amazing job with what she had preserving memories and things that were important to her. And so, um, I, I love this little, this introductory picture I have right here. This is one of my great, great aunts. And um, this picture just showed up on Family Search one day. And I just struck me with how interesting it is. And as I look at this picture, I want to know more about that event. Like, what happened? Who is the guy with the the 10 gallon hat. Um, what is she doing? Where are they? And um, so memories can evoke um, a desire to learn more and a desire of closeness with our ancestors. And so um, we are going to talk about that. So the first thing that we need to do with pictures is to get ourselves organized. And so this is just a little checklist that I've created. And I am talking about setting something up so that you can work on capturing your memories on your own time so that you don't have to have all of your pictures in one place and record everything at once, you know, a project that will take 50 hours. Instead, if you have things set up, you can walk away and then if you have five or 10 minutes, even you can walk over and you can work on this project of getting yourself organized and recording your memories. And so this is one thing that we need to do is to gather supplies for the project, find a home for the project, gather memories. We'll talk about all of these sort memories, label memories, decide physical and digital storage, take pictures, edit pictures, and publish this on the Memories app. Now that is the next class. It is called Decorating Your Family Tree and that we are talking all about using the Family Search Memories app, which I've found the most efficient, easiest, and best way to add memories to the family tree. And so we'll talk more about that next week. Um, but first, um, let's see, sorry, having some issues here again, new computer. We're just going to have a little, um, <laughs> we're just going to go back to the beginning of the slides to the one that I missed. So this to me is one of the most poignant pictures that I have ever taken. And it is a picture of what I call my pile of lost souls. These are pictures that nobody in my family could determine who they were, how they were related, where they were, when they were. We can kind of look at some clues and maybe figure out, you know, when they were, um, where they were, but they were given to me by my grandmother in a huge box of photographs. 
And as I went through those photographs, I thought, wow, most of these are not written on. I do not know who they are. And so I sat down with her and I went through every picture in this box. And she pretty much knew who everyone was, but these are the few people, the few pictures that she had no idea who they were. And it was frustrating for her and for me. So I just wanna put a reminder out there if you have relatives that are alive, I want you to think about your oldest living relatives that would remember things. Run to them quick and get out of them stories and pictures and documents, anything they have that they might remember that you will not. Because at this point, they really just become faces on paper. They have become lost souls who are they? I don't know. I don't know who to attach them to or who they represent. So it's our job to make sure that we have as few of these lost souls as possible. We want to make sure that these people, these pictures make it to the person on the family tree that they are um, representative of. We want to make sure that we have information written on the back of that picture if we can. So just a little thought here, we do not want a pile of lost souls. So we talked about getting organized already and now we're gonna go through this a little bit. So I am going to talk about the best ways um, to organize yourself, in my opinion. Um, you may have a different way. These are just ideas, but take it and run with it and create your own idea. That would be fine. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to gather our, our supplies. We're going to make our own little photo studio. Now, uh, what I did was I found a place in my house where it's not a lot of, a lot of high traffic, but yet it's close enough that it's easier for me to just zip over and work on things when I want to. And so I just got out a nice little, um, a wood card table. So it's nice and sturdy. Um, a chair, I always made sure my hands were clean or I wore gloves. Um, I have a light box, mat sheet protectors, um, books or boxes to level things, um, my numbered photos and my paper with photo identification. And we'll talk about that more. Now, um, here is a picture on this slide of the light box that I have used, and it's called a scanner bin. And you can look that up on Amazon or you can look up scanner box. Um, this one is more high tech. And as you can see, I mean, it's only $15, $15.50. Um, it has a light panel to put a light upon the document or the pictures. Sometimes that is a really good thing and sometimes it's not. Uh, we have found that if you have a glossy picture, a light directly on it will often make it um, have glare. And so it's really hard to record it. And that's what the matte sheet protectors are for. Um, and it's just to cut down on the glare. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But this is, this is one of the products that I really like. Um, and there are a lot of different forms of this. At the BYU Family History Library, we have a shot box version, which is, it's a deluxe version. Um, it's for if you're ever taking pictures of things to sell um, online, or um, if you really need to docu document something, this has got, it's like a little mini photo studio. So you can always come into the library or, um, you know, a lot of the family history centers may have things like that, but um, I recommend just getting one of your own. It's nice and easy and you have it right there at home. Um, so here's my home for this project. This is um, one that I did. You can see there's my chair, there's my bin, there's all of the things that I have. And it's a good place. Um, I found that really having some good lighting, natural lighting is important because oftentimes that is the best way to take a picture without any um, artificial lighting. Even if it seems dark, it is amazing what your um, phone can pick up and improve upon. So 
like I said, my materials were set up. Anytime I wanted to use it, I can go use them and work on the project. I didn't have to have everything done right there. Um, and for me, that's the biggest thing. One of the things, one of the gems my grandmother told me was, um, and she was a really big, a wonderful seamstress. And she said, Michelle, if you don't have your sewing machine set up and ready to use, you will not use it. And I have found that to be true. And that's kind of true for this too. Like you want to have things ready to go. So that is easy just to hop in and do things. So the next thing that you're going to do is gather your memories. So what do we consider memories? Like what are the type of things that we want to take pictures of? And so we're going to think a little bit more beyond, you know, beyond the box. We're going to think a little bit more than just photographs or documents. And here are just a few examples of that. Um, here I have the bronze star that my grandfather was awarded um, for her heroic acts in World War II. And um, it's really pretty. It's really cool to see, but it is getting very old. You can see the velvets. Um, the star is actually on a velvet. Um, it's in a velvet box and you can see that it's eroding and it's, you know, it's wearing away. And so I just took a picture of it, a really good high quality picture with my light box and my phone. Um, and now I could put that photograph up on family search. And, you know, 20 years from now, when the whole thing is decayed away or whenever, maybe 50 years, um, it'll be up there and I can have it. And then here I have, this is my same grandpa. Um, he was a health nut. We always called him a health nut. I just remember that. And um, so here's an article that was written in the local newspaper about grandpa. And I took a picture of the article and I put it on family search as a memory um, for him on his tree. And I really like, I like the look of it being on newspaper. And I like the little picture there. You can see that's actually kind of fading away too. So here we have pictures. Um, in the very back, you can see there is a quilt. This is a quilt that my great grandmother um, made and it's really pretty. I love it, um, but it's also falling apart. It has some tears, rips and tears in it. So I took a picture of that so that that can be preserved as well. So, um, and I, I wanna tell you just a quick little story about as, as you're going through this process of remembering your ancestors, they really want to be remembered and they, they want to be connected with. So down here, these, this is a set of um, great, great, great grandparents. And I was, you know, gathering all of my pictures and putting things on, um, on family search. And I got a message one day from a lady that I did not know. And um, she had written to me on Ancestry and she said, oh, I noticed that you're related to these, these people. And I said, well, yes, I am. This is the Hyatt family. And I said, well, yeah, yes, I am. And she said, well, I was just at a garage sale and I noticed that there was all of this family history. So there is a family tree and there's a bunch of written information and there are pictures. And she said, and the names are these people are, would you like to have this? Well, of course I would. So um, she sent it to me and I, I just thought, isn't that amazing? You know, out of anywhere in the world, these could have been, they were sitting in a garage sale and somebody thought they were of value, picked them up, contacted me. I really felt like, you know what? These people want to be remembered. They want their pictures um, where they belong. And so you may or may not have experiences like this where you're feeling your ancestors. Um, I kind of felt like they were saying, don't leave me out, remember us. So um, the first thing you're gonna do when you have a box of pictures or items is to organize them. 
And so whatever works for you, you can organize them by events, places, people, family. I like to organize them by people. So I took all of my photos and I would divide them up into, um, into piles and then just divide them by people. Now, some people have mentioned like right here, you can see, I have a little sticky note on that picture. Um, it was not on there for very long. I wouldn't leave it on there for very long. You may find a better way to do it. Maybe just laying a, a blank piece of acid-free paper on there, but this is what worked for me. And I, I did it in a very, very quick time. So we're gonna put piles of our pictures. So I'm thinking of um, a lot of these pictures came out of just a big box of random pictures that my grandma gave me. And so as I was working with her, I sorted them by person so that I would be able to do this. Okay, so here's something else that you can do to make sure that your pictures do not become lost souls. So honestly, even if before you get them onto family search, if you at least do this, if you're not gonna get them up there, at least do this with your pictures, um, go through them and whatever you know, um, you can buy special um, markers just for photographs and pens, just do a search on Amazon. Or on this, I just used a soft lead pencil and I wrote very, very carefully. Now this does take a bit of doing, but it's a really fun walk down memory lane. This is just a simple photo inventory that I made with um, just Word. So you can do that with your word processor any way that you want. But what I did was I would take a picture and on the back of it, I would write the date, the place, the event, who was in it. And then I would number the picture. So you can see my number one on this picture corresponds to the number one on my inventory. And it goes, you know, through, I think I have 10 pictures on this. And so that is a really nice way to, um, I even did some of this as I was asking my grandma. So I would just take the picture and write what she was telling me so that I could remember. And so then at least whoever inherits these pictures next, they can look on them and say, oh, this is what exactly was happening. And this is who it was, and this is where they were. And so um, I, I highly suggest doing that, keeping some kind of an inventory so that your photos are not eventually lost or lost souls. Okay, so we need to choose physical storage for our pictures. So as you can imagine, I have inherited a lot of pictures. Some of the pictures were in the old black photo albums, um, scotch taped right on there. The tape of course had completely degraded and um, the pictures are starting to fade. They're starting not to look as good. And so we need to get these pictures. We need to stop um, stop the decay right now and get these pictures into acid-free storage. Um, so you can research acid-free storage. There are books that you can put things into. There are boxes. I really like archival, archival boxes that I can put my pictures into. Um, but just be sure that they're not sitting in old albums um, with tape on them and with acid paper that is, um, you know, eating them away. And you can tell a lot of the pictures I have, um, surprisingly from the 70s are in worse shape than some of the really older ones that were never put in an album. The ones that were from the 70s, many of them are actually brittle and have parts broken off and just very faded. So here are just some examples of storage. Again, I the only thing I recommend is that it is acid free. So you can look that up. As you can see, here are a bunch of different boxes, archival um, storage boxes. These are some, um, some different 
just uh, photo books, but always make sure that they are acid free and that they are not going to damage your photos any longer. So if you get nothing else from this class, label the back of your pictures, put them somewhere where they will stay and not get into worse shape so that when you pass them down, they are not lost. So um, we talked about our physical storage for our pictures. We're gonna talk about digital storage. So where do you wanna keep your photos? Now, I keep my photos. I mean, they're pretty much on my phone. So if you have an iPhone, you have your camera roll, but it also stores it in the cloud. So your pictures are stored kind of two places, the same with Google Photos. So it's on your phone, it's also in the cloud. Um, and then we can take those pictures. So when I take a picture on my phone, it's stored on my phone in the cloud, but then when I add it to Family Search, it's stored in three places. So it's on my phone, it's on the cloud, and it's on Family Search. And um, Family Search, you can put a lot of pictures up there. Um, right now, we can add up to 5,000 pictures. And um, I think that I've heard before that once it hits 5,000, 5, it slows down a little. So I think you can probably add more as well. But anyways, let, let me know if you get up to 5,000 and then we'll, you know, we'll talk about some other options. But um, so that that's what I suggest. You also can upload to memories from your laptop. So, or, or your computer. Um, so anyways, but I'm just talking specifically about the easiest way, remember that we're talking about with, um, with using our phone. Okay, so I've got my piles laid out. I've got my little box here. Sometimes you don't need the box. You can take a good enough picture. Now, this is a plug right here for anybody that's looking for a great excuse to get the, the newest and greatest iPhone. I highly recommend making sure that you have a later model. Um, it, it, just the pictures are so good. And I have found that even if I take my pictures to a scanner, and use the, the high processing, um, the high, just the high end scanners at the library. They're really not that much different than the pictures that I take with my good old iPhone. I do have a newer phone within the last couple of years. So it's really, really worth it. It is an excellent tool to have. Um, and I, I highly recommend that. So there, that's my plug or, or your, or new Android. So, um, so here you can see, so there's my box right there um, on the back right. And that is, that's an archival box, the little floral box. I found that pretty box, got my photo stuffed in there. I took and I, I did my piles. I've got my inventory and then I'm going to take a picture here and I'm going to mark a check on my inventory sheet. So this is, again, just my system. You might come up with something better, but I, I found this to be um, something really good. Another note, um, I did this with my daughter. She's 22 and she and I so enjoyed doing this project together and getting to know our ancestors. It was really, really fun. Um, okay. so. Next, we're gonna edit the picture. Here you can see I put a matte sheet protector to cut shine on the photo. So sometimes we found that when you're taking a picture um, and you turn the lights on because you wanna get a really great picture, sometimes keeping the lights off actually makes a better picture. And with my phone, I can brighten the picture. So you're gonna to have to play around with what works for you, what cuts down the glare, Again, we used sheet protectors, but sometimes just good old fashioned, nothing was best, but turning all the lights out and kind of taking what looked like a more dark picture uh, actually turned out to be really good. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk a little about editing pictures. Um, when we put a picture up on, especially on family search, getting a picture up there 
That's great. That's wonderful. But I also think about, you know, what kind of picture, how do our ancestors want to be remembered? And I had a really funny experience at the BYU Family History Library. I was helping this lady with her pictures. And her mother was um, this beautiful lady. And she had so many pictures of her mother as a younger lady and um, a middle-aged lady, still beautiful. And then um, for her profile picture, she just had the worst picture up there. <laughs> and I said to her, I said, now, how do you feel like your mother would like to be remembered? I mean, I know my mother would just be, you know, Michelle, get a better picture on there. And so I helped her see that, you know, our ancestors, they want to be remembered as the best of themselves instead of the worst of themselves. So just keep that in mind. Um, what I'm showing you here is a lot of times a picture just looks better when we crop it. So we pull it in because a picture like this, what are we really trying to see? We're trying to see a person's face. And so honestly, my finished result here, I would even crop it in more probably if I were putting it up on family search because you really want to, to you know, aside from maybe a historical background or something you want to point out, there's not a really a lot here in this picture, but you can see on an iPhone, um, you're just going to tap on your picture and you can edit and adjust your picture. And so um, I usually use the little magic wand on the iPhone and it normally just brightens the picture and saturates the color a little more. And then the crop feature, that is the one I use a lot of too. So just to bring your, your picture up close. Um, something exciting that I have just um, been playing around with and working with is on the website, My Heritage. And so those of you that have a membership there, you can go over there and they have a feature that will restore old photos. If you um, put a picture up on my heritage and it's an old photo, maybe it's got cracks in it, maybe it's really faded. It is amazing. They can restore these photos and then animate them. If you haven't seen that, you have to go try it. It's it's to be honest, it's a little, it's a little creepy sometimes to see a picture animated, but um, see a person come to life. But I've been really impressed with what they do. They will also take a person's picture and um, that person can talk and tell a story about their lives. And that's like a whole other class. But I, um, I encourage you if you have pictures that need restoring that um, need a little touching up to try my heritage because they do a great job of um, restoring and making pictures look better. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna load pictures to the Family Search Memories app. And that is what our whole other class is about next week is how to use the Memories app and how to get those pictures up onto Family Search.